Hello my gravy babies, how are you guys doing? Welcome to a new video of the JSI Explained. Today we're gonna be actually writing the initializing code for our JSI library. The last video we only took a look into the basic code about getting the runtime, which is fairly complex but not very interesting. So today we will actually manage to compile our application. It's not gonna work and it's not gonna do, do anything, but at least it will compile. <laughs> So let's get down to it. Now, on the last video, uh, we created a new module using BuilderBob. So I'm just going to navigate to that folder one more time. And one thing that I didn't cover is about tooling and how do, would you go editing this, uh, this uh, library. So in order to do this, I first started using VS Code and I started modifying the C++ files directly. And I have to say, this is not the smartest way of doing this because even though VS Code has uh, support for C++, it doesn't actually work very well. That is because um, it doesn't know about any of the compilation chain or the dependencies that one needs in order to write um, iOS code or Android code. So therefore, doing this on um, VS Code is not the smartest choice. Now, I'm sure you can get it to work. I just don't want to waste time doing this. Um, and therefore I use Xcode because Xcode already knows about all the dependency chain that one needs to execute a C++ library on iOS. So my recommendation is just go with Xcode. Just save yourself some time. It's not very important once you get your library working on iOS. Then on Android, it's just creating the same binding code that we will create now, so it doesn't really matter. Great, so I'm going to go back into my terminal and now I'm going to go into the example of, uh, directory. The, we're gonna use the example directory to open our Xcode project that is because our library, even though it depends on the certain React dependencies and React Native dependencies, it doesn't have all the necessary files it needs to work. It needs to run inside of a React Native project. So we first need to get our example project running. So once inside my example folder, I'm going to do a yarn. Now I already did this before and it should be fairly fast. So this is basically just a React Native project, nothing too interesting about it. Uh, but then I also need to take care of some changes. Now that my node modules are installed, I'm going to go into the iOS folder. And um, actually, let's just open it on um, VS Code for now. So I'm going to go into the iOS folder and into the pod file. And the pod file is just a regular React Native pod file, even though it's not the latest version of React Native, it's not very important. What's important here is that you will see our dependency has been declared with a relative path, right? So that is uh, React Native is or Cocoa pods, whenever we install the pods, is going to traverse the directory into the root, where it's actually is going to find our pod spec and it's gonna install all, or it's gonna copy all of our source files into the React Native application. There is one thing that I'm going to do, which is not 100% necessary or might not be 100% necessary in your case, which is I'm going to remove Flipper. That is because Flipper uh, somehow crashes on my machine. And also um, Flipper does increase the compilation type, uh, time of our React Native project. So even though it's very useful, we will not need it for now. Um, of course, on a real application, yeah, this will be working. So it doesn't really matter. This is just for our example application. So I'm going to remove that. And um, now that I am on the iOS directory, I'm going to do a pod install. So once again, I already ran this, but basically it's going to install all the dependencies of our React Native project. So now, as stated, we need to, we're gonna use Xcode in order to do our coding. 
Um, in order to do this, we're going to go into the folder of our library. I'm going to go into the example folder, not the iOS one, because here it's pretty bare bones and it only will import these two files. It's not very useful. We need to have all the dependencies inside of a single workspace for the compilation chain to work. So I'm going to go into the example folder, iOS, and I'm going to open the exe workspace. This is pretty standard, you should know about it now. Um, so now that I have my workspace open, I can just try to run my application. And it will immediately fail. <laughs> this is to be expected. As I said, setting up the library is not, it's not super straightforward. So actually in the last video, um, there are a couple of mistakes and we're gonna correct them now. There's nothing major, just uh, the basic idea is still the same. So first of all, here I forgot the .h um, termination. I'm going to save that. And now let's just talk a little bit about what do we actually need to do. So if I open the Super SQLite example target, here are all the files of the React Native application. You should be already familiar with this. There's nothing too fancy about it. And we're going to use, as I said, we're going to use the example directory or the example project in order to develop our library. Now, our library source code is not directly inside of the final target of the application, but it's actually inside of the pods. So if I open the pods target and I go to development pods, I should be able to find our library. And here you can see, as we stated before, because of our pod spec, it has already in copied or brought all the C++ file, all the H files, all the H and MM files on the iOS directory as well, right? So whatever we put in there, whenever we do a pod install, this is going to be copied into the pods. So let's start with our Super SQLite. So this is where I show you before I uh, forgot about the termination, the header file. But this is basically the, the same thing that we wrote last time. If you remember, I'm just going to go into VS Code for a little bit and show it to you. Here, if I go on the root of my project into the iOS folder, this was just the code that we wrote before in order to get the runtime. And I'm just fixing the header file. So once I fix that, I actually need to create this header file. So what I'm going to do here on Xcode itself, I'm just going to delete the old C++ implementation that Builder Bob created for us. We don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to right click, delete, move to trash, also for its header file. Now that that's done, I can just right click and create a new file. I'm going to select the C++ file and I'm going to give it the same name that we use for our header file, which is React Native Super SQL Lite. I'm going to leave the also create header file selected. And on the next screen, you might see that some target is already selected for you. This is not 100% necessary because as we saw, once again, the pod spec is just going to copy all the C++ files, all the header files. So this is actually not managed by Xcode. It will be managed by Cocoa Pods. But just in case, if you want to be thorough, you can just find our library and add it to that target. It shouldn't make that much of a difference. And now Xcode is going to create two files for us. The first one is the C++ file and its header file. Now, here you can see it has the extension HPP, which is not H. Um, there's not that much of a difference, except that HPP files, header files for C++, they are meant to go with C++ files, right? Because C and C++ are different beasts. Sometimes if you're not careful, you might end up using C++ code inside of a pure C header. 
and that just explodes. Um, but it doesn't doesn't really make that much of a difference, right? Just to be a little consistent with what we have, and I don't want to waste time fixing any surprise errors, I'm just going to redefine this into a simple header library. And we can finally write a little bit of what will be our JSI library. Now, I'm just going to take a small snippet and gonna paste it and we'll, let's walk over it. So first I'm going to include the JSI library files or the header files for JSI. Here is where all the JSI objects are going to be, right? Or we're gonna see in the future that JSI has a lot of helper classes and wrapper objects that we need to use in order to create JavaScript values and functions and so on and so forth. So I need to include these two libraries. Then I'm just going to use the Facebook namespace because all the objects inside of these libraries are inside of two namespaces. First one, Facebook, and then JSI. So this is actually Facebook, double colon, JSI, runtime, yada, yada. I don't want to um, write this every single time, so I'm just using the namespace. And here, you can finally see we have the two methods that we declared on the last video when we were um, instantiating our JSI bridge or, or, or um, React Native module, just, just a pure module. But when we access the bridge, here we had these two functions that we said that we were going to write. These are going to be the entry point to our library. So here is where I have the definition of these two libraries. Now, if I go into the C++ implementation file, right now it's empty, it's going to complain because I renamed the header file, so I'm just going to fix that. And here is where I need to um, implement or write the implementation of these two libraries. So here, once again, I'm going to use the namespace of Facebook because I don't want to write this every single time. And for now, I'm just going to leave this as empty functions. Right. Um, this is going to be, we're not going to write proper JSI code for now. All I need to do is to get the project into a compilation state. So in theory, you can see that these two files are now somewhat ready to be called. Now I only need to make sure that the project compiles. We fix this header file, but um, if you see it here, I also had some little mistakes in here. First of all, here I forgot an ampersand, and here I also forgot to declare a variable. If you give me one second, I need to find a piece of code. Um, yeah, this is just Objective-C. Like I said, don't worry too much about this. Um, we will not touch this file too much. Um, in the future, we will see that sometimes getting some values from the specific platform is not very straightforward from C++. It's a lot easier to get it from the native side of things, right? If you do Objective-C, it's on iOS. If it's on Android, then we're going to do it on Java. You know, get some sort of function that we need to call or some specific value that we need to call. It's a lot easier to get it on the native code of the platform and then just pass it into our um, JSI module. So we will do that in the future in order to get one, one variable, but for now, we don't need to worry about that too much. So I'm just going to save this now because I built the app before, I am just going to clean my build folder. Maybe um, you will need to do this as well. You can also do it via Command Shift K, and it's also going to clean the build folder. And now I'm just going to hit uh, the Run button. I can also do Command R, and it's going to start building our React Native application. Hopefully, if everything goes fine, it won't throw any error. And then we can finally see our React Native application up and running.
great, this is what we wanted to see. Uh, of course, it's crashing. It's not. <laughs> it's not going to work because if, as we mentioned before, the example project is calling the old API, right? The old uh, C++ function that was in there. It, that's trying to run that and since we deleted all the source code and we're no longer initializing the native uh, module in order to use this method then there's nothing to run there's nothing to call it basically just crashes but we have finally everything that we need in order to start writing our JSI bindings in the next video we will actually um, explore a little bit about the the runtime object, a little bit about the classes, we'll create some example methods uh, in order to get a feeling of how to use the JSI. Then um, at some point we will import SQLite as an entire source file so that um, it will compile with our entire application. And then finally we will start writing the JSI bindings for SQLite. Thanks a lot for joining me. Please like the video and consider subscribing and see you next time.